Hello there, please welcome the Vengeful was Kanhai Ritualist Grow Farm. So after testing like 40 different builds and several professions, finally I made a working build and got some surprising results. First thing first, let's start with some basics. Question number one, I guess, what can you farm here? Well, gold armor pieces has to be the number one, most common drop. Closely followed by the Grow Necklaces, which by the way are Nicholas the Traveler item and surprisingly contain plant fibers. Don't expect too many fibers though, it's more like a nice side product of the farm. If you are doing this in hard mode, and I hope you do, you can expect close to one unit gold every 70 or 80 seconds. Also there are 5 possible grow bosses in this area and you can always farm one of them, meaning elite tombs are also possible. If you are curious, I've got uh, 3 elite tombs uh, from 50 runs, not bad at all. And uh, superior vigors or other sort of runes are also very much possible from this farm. This was the good news, now the bad news. This farm isn't really beginner friendly, you need to rely on different ranger spirits. Timing is very strict, uh, you can't just go there and farm like we do at other farms. You must have uh, fast reaction times too. Alright, best if I explain things in action, let the fun begin. Once you have the builds and the equipment, travel to Port Sledge. If you don't have this outpost yet, it's like a 2 minute detour from Drox, easy to get here. We start the farm with the Rezone trick, this way when you finish the farm and resign, you'll be taken close to the portal and don't have to walk back all the time. Probably the biggest handicap of this farm is the number of rezones. We know the grows have a different spawn each run and if they are in our way, best to rezone till we get a decent spawn. Ok, the road is clean now, let's do this. In the first few seconds just run till you reach this hill, but uh, don't go too close to it. I suggest your character's aggro bubble doesn't reach the edge of the hill. First use uh, Generous was Tsungrai and Planter of Flame and now we must put down some spirits to secure both safety and quickness. Quickly micro all your ranger heroes and make sure they all put down the spirits. Edge of Extinction is needed to finish the bosses and the leftover grows. Quickening Zephyr allows us to maintain a Vengeful was Kanhai, the elite skill, easily and also helps with the Mesmer skill recharge times. And the last spirit might be unknown or least known for many of you. This is called the Greater Conflagration. It converts physical damage to fire damage. And this last one and Mantra of Flame work hand in hand. It's going to reuse the Grow Warrior's hits and also give us great energy management. So once you see the three spirits in the top left corner of the screen, Micro, make haste on your character and flag your heroes back to the outpost. And the second red dot is a glute place next to the collector NPC. Now make sure you have a Generous Frost Tsungrai, Mantra of Flame and I'm Unstoppable on you while running. And try to aggro as many grows as you can but also try to dodge their attacks and don't get stuck in the meanwhile. You can collect around 25 grows like this but this varies a bit in each run. Ok, once you have all the grows following you, run to the top of the cliff and quickly use the elite skill. This will drop the other item spell of course and heal you in the process. Make sure you don't bring the grows too close to the spirits. If they would aggro the spirits, they might leave you and kill the spirits instead. Ok, now use either Nightmare and Cry of Pain on the warriors and uh, look around because in hard mode the monster's AI is different to normal mode. Some of the necros will not attack you at all. In order to spike the whole group at once, we must take all foo's HP sub 90% or Edge of Extinction will not kill them all. So start using Vestros Demise and Vestros Worry on the non-attacking rolls and don't be surprised the Grawl Warriors will also run away uh, from time to time. Just keep maintaining the Elite skill and I am unstoppable and spam the Mesmer skills as often as you can. The Grow Necros won't use any skills, meaning they are very vulnerable to skills like uh, Vastron's Demise. And once a few Grows die, Edge of Extinction will take care of the rest. Now you can pick up the drops, type slash resign and do the farm again.
Okay, let's see what happens if Edge of Extinction doesn't reach all grows and there are survivors. As long as the spirit of quickening Zephyr is up, you can't really die. The elite skill will leech the mob's HP nicely and protect us as well. Uh, and the necro boss and some other necros are alive now. Just maintain the elite and use wastrels till they give up. If you have the legion or summoning stone, feel free to use it for finishing the leftovers. The monk boss can be harder to solo, just use the, the legionnaire, use Vaster's Worry on the boss and you can solo him like this. Vaster's Worry is very effective against the bosses due to their shortened hex duration and I highly recommend using it on them. By the way the monk boss has uh, unyielding aura and if you kill him a random grower will be resurrected but uh, don't deal with that, won't give you more drops. About the other bosses I can tell you, the LA one has a glimmering mark but not too dangerous, the warrior one has a healing signet but if his HP is sub 90% uh, EOA can solo him, uh, the necro boss acts like uh, any other necro, no threat at all and the ranger boss has a poison arrow and bleeding which, which will make the grow warriors use uh, victory's mine, a self heal, but uh, otherwise you can finish him as well. The next clip is just for the laws. Uh, I made a mistake here and didn't use the elite in time, failed the run basically, but the Grow's HP was low and the EOE actually killed them. If this happens you don't get any drops of course, but still a fun thing to watch. Finally my best run during favor of course, guess how many unids I will get, but wait till the end. Seven Anids, uh, who would have thought the growers drop gold items this well? Uh, well, not me for sure. And finally, the last clip from a normal mode. Everything is the same except you have to run backwards or the grower will lose a grow. The monsters won't flee in normal mode, giving us a more relaxing time. Sadly, drops are nowhere near as good as in hard mode. Take a look, uh, way less Anid golds and way less profit. Alright folks, this was the Grow Farm, hope you like this one, don't forget to rate the video or subscribe to my channel and as always, see you next time.